think we're, are we all live and working now, Richard? It's still showing us loading on my screen, but it's telling you that it's live. So bear with me a sec just to make sure and then YouTube can have me saying that. Yep, so Councillor Dunn has also now sent her apologies. Um, we are live, so the first act is for the panel to elect its chair. Um, I think the panel's happy to nominate me. Just indicate by nodding your head. Fab. Uh, fantastic. So uh, this is our last panel for this municipal year. Um, and I think a lot of our business has been moved to the next meeting. Um, so we're agreeing our work, our upcoming work plan, first of all, is that right? Yep. Um, so does anyone have any comments or queries about the work plan? Uh, yes, Bill Graves. Hi, the, um, the, I believe the, the staff survey, which was going to come to this panel meeting, was all, is to be added to that to the uh, the June meeting as well. Fab, do you have that, Richard? Brilliant. I assume everyone's happy with that, Fab. Okay, um, and then I think if that's all, if okay, um, yeah, in, on the agenda, I suggested that the panel mm -hmm. ask Councillor Smith and. Neris et al um, of things that might be coming up from a housing perspective yes. um, in the next year for them to sort of give you ideas and then you can stick it on a long list that can then be shortened down to a short list of things that would actually be useful. Stephen asked at the last meeting um, if there could be sort of some sort of programme so that deadlines could be built in for that. Uh, that sounds like a sensible approach for me and also obviously I think we're all keen to work in a way that means that we're being helpful and supporting and a useful critical voice rather than sort of yeah and not that so I think that would be brilliant if the team would be happy to do that. Fab. Um, any other comments or anything on this item? Um, I assume that that will be something for the new panel to decide in um, the the first, probably the first couple of meetings of the next year. Fab. Okay. Um, in which case, are we okay to move on to the next item? Fab. So um, I'd like to thank uh, Amy and Neris and Linda and Bill for coming along to speak to us this evening. Um, and I'll hand over to Councillor Smith um, first and um, for the item on the amendments to the uh, tenancy agreements, if that's okay. And feel free to you know shift around amongst yourselves. Yeah, thanks. I'll, I'll be brief because yeah, you've got um, several officers here this evening who would be far better placed to take you through this than I am. But maybe I'll just say first, um, this is something that w won't be going to to cabinet or council. It is something that's signed off by the head of housing. Um, so I have had, um, you know, I've had the chance to look at this, ask questions, um, have my input into it. But I felt it was something that would benefit from having scrutiny from a, a wider group of councillors, which is why I suggested it comes to you this evening. Um, the, con, you know, the, the questions that I had, um, the things I wanted clarity about, I, I feel have been dealt with. Um, yeah, it was just some sort of minor points of clarity over sort of uh, responsibilities of, of tenants when it came to looking after their gardens. Um, we're now treating uh, tenants in sheltered housing exactly the same as tenants in general housing when it comes to pets and uh, uh, whether they're allowed to to keep pets um, obviously larger larger animals like dogs um, where they sometimes need to ask permission from the council um, in order to do that um, so I'm happy with what we've got but yeah I thought it would benefit from you having a look at it as well so I'd be interested to hear what you've got to say this evening that's all from me. Uh, 
Happy for anyone else to, uh, Bill, did you want, or Neris, did you want to come in on that? Yes, Chair. <clears throat> Sorry, Neris looks like she wants to go as well. I'll defer to Neris no, first. Uh, not at all, <laughs> Bill. I was, I was going to suggest that you might just want to give the panel a little no, bit no. of a sort of overview of some of the, of the key, key, key detail, yeah. That's fine, thank you. Yeah, I mean, the, um, the, the tenancy agreement was last revised in 2014. Um, we were planning a uh, an, an update uh, in 2019 19 and had began that. However, uh, something came along which kind of changed our priorities and our focus. Um, so we've, we're now at the stage where we've we've been through the, the the first round or the round of statutory consultation with tenants. The process for um, for actually changing a tenancy agreement, a variation, a deed of variation for a um, tenancy agreement is set out in statute and we've followed that process um, thus far and we're at the stage where we've considered all the uh, the responses from tenants who did respond relatively few responses most were service requests and all oh, thank you keep going um, as, as Linda mentioned the the key key uh, items in there for uh, tenants in the housing for older people schemes is that yes they will be able to keep pets with permission in line with the rest of the general needs stock that doesn't apply to tower blocks there's different safety considerations there as you can imagine with a mass exodus of animals and humans if needed um, there's also been quite a, a, a raft of change to legislation um, and in particular uh, GDPR and also um, the building and fire safety regulations. So we've incorporated those requirements uh, specifically with a duty to co cooperate. Um, the, apart from that, the, we've updated with some minor clarifications, better explanations of, uh, of the terms. Um, and there was a couple of new things in there that um, uh, I had to ask someone what, what it was about uh, in regards to um, uh, actual use of um, the wet systems for, for for waste it's kind of things that um b days used to be covered for covered by i don't know any, anyone's flag there is a uh something we wouldn't give permission for um for water jets to be connected to uh um the the main supply it needs a separate tank without some specific um built with water regulation features um quite complicated but if uh, anyone was interested in that um, that's a little bit in there, but yeah, the, we've set out the, the details of the uh, proposed changes and uh, we're proposing appendix to the uh, the actual new tenancy agreement to be served on, on council tenants. So any questions really or clarifications required? Um, so I'll take, I think I have a couple, but it may be that Councillor Rule and Councillor Sanderson get to your first, so absolutely fine. So I'll go for Councillor Sanderson and then Councillor Rule, and then maybe if you've got multiple questions, if the team's happy to do it this way, if you could like bunch them up um, into threes, um, but it may not, not be the case. Uh, okay. So, okay. Right. Um, I'm a dog lover and I have a dog myself. Um, I just wondered if there are any checks in place for people who do keep dogs um, who um, may may not have an opportunity to um, um, exercise them properly, keep them as one of the residents in my ward does in um, the large numbers um, and um, uh, fouling at the back garden at uh, to the detriment of neighbours. Yeah, it's it's always a, an issue, regardless of the type of accommodation that people live in, as to you know, is to actually have one of the conditions that the, the dog must be um, looked after, um, and um, and that that also includes making sure that it does get um, does get proper walks and so on. Obviously, we don't have a, a, a the resources to do a a checking system. We do um, re rely on people who are actually reporting us reporting to us where there are problems. Um, obviously, there's so many people do have pets. We could, we we could never um, be able to to police that. Um, there is an animal warden, of course, uh, within the council as well, um, and any welfare concerns we report through to them. But certainly, if if someone was not treating their their animal well, um, or was causing a nuisance to neighbours, um, usually the owners. Um, uh, uh, issue as opposed to the dog um, but we would would be able to remove the permission for that pet thank you so happy to if that's all your questions joe then um go to councillor rule 
Thank you so much. Thanks, Bill. Um, I was just going to ask a little bit further information about the consultation with tenants and just to ask if you've got an idea of, um, you may not have it hand, but like numbers in terms of respondents and maybe just a little bit more detail on like whether there are any concerns raised in particular. Or I know that you said that there were mostly service requests, but I just kind of wondered what, what that kind of looked like. And then also, um, I know that um, you said that we were the last time it was changed was last time this was changed was 2014 I just wondered whether we have a I may have missed this sorry in your update but whether we have a planned date for it to be reviewed in the future as well to get an idea of how often this is looked at thanks yeah in the in the body of the background report um, on the consultation outcomes we've set out was 31 responses in total um, we actually as part of the statutory um, consultation we have to sort of stage one notice on everyone with the um, with the proposed changes from the, our, our initial work with uh, service teams and tenant ambassadors. Uh, I say out of all, uh, right into 7,800 tenants, we've got 31 responses. Um, and as I say, 23 of those respondents were content with the changes or were asking for a service request. Uh, and the remainder, uh, there's seven bullet points uh, where people were asking for um, an annual inspection of gardens, take action to terminate a tenancy after three reports of antisocial behaviour, elderly persons unable to test their alarms due to mobility, should be allowed to keep electric scooters in their property, storage for mobility scooters to be available everywhere. Two respondents did not agree with us keeping a photograph on their file, and one person doesn't agree with preventing caravans, motorhomes and trailers being kept in car parks. Um, so in, in terms of the responses, very, very low, um, not uncommon, I, I have to say, when we do a consultation like this, or I do remember the one in 2014 and the, the, the level of responses was around this number as well. Um, so it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite positive. Majority of people who did respond uh, were very much in favour of our proposals. Um, does that answer your questions, Councillor Wall? Do you have any follow ups? That's great, thank you. But I was just going to ask whether we've got any thoughts on how we can, as a wider project of like driving up engagement from tenants, but yeah, it would just be great to, I guess, do some work in thinking about how we make sure that we're getting as many respondents as possible, recognising it may not be top of their priority list. Yeah, we've, um, we do, we do carry out quite a, well, as, as well as uh, this consultation, we've got a number of consultations on various things. Obviously, we also had the STAR survey uh, which was carried out, which say so the results will come to the, the next meeting and over a thousand tenants responded to that, um, or over 1,990 odd. Um, so around the figures that the uh, the, the company involved were, um, were looking at. Um, we also have a, we're currently working through the Landlord Services Transformation Programme. And within that is a whole raft of communication activities to actually go out and routinely um, speak to tenants as individuals. Um, obviously, we've got to get the, the resource lined up exactly to do that. Uh, we've also got um, in the very near future, uh, individual consultation with residents on social housing decarb fund works, um, where we have to understand what their their circumstances are as a, as a, as a home um, and how we can work with them. So there are lots of uh, opportunities coming up um, and I say the biggest one will come out of the transformation program and that will be a, a long-term permanent engagement uh, activity. Fantastic. Any other follow-ups, Councillor Wall? Uh, brilliant. I had a, a couple. I think I did have questions about sort of the pets clauses, but I think most has been covered. So just to clarify, the permission for pets, that tends to just cover dogs. Would it cover cats, but nothing smaller? No, it's we, we, we actually say if you want to keep a pet, um, you should ask for permission. Um, the vast majority of people don't ask for permission. Um, but obviously, if it's an appropriate location with no complaints, we would grant that retrospectively if needed. Um, in I'm just thinking, to, yeah, I was just thinking about, for example, I don't necessarily see the problem with having a gerbil in a tower block. But no, no, and, and there probably isn't. Um, but there are some it's some instances where we, we do need to give um, uh, certainly clear consideration because um, certainly if, if you if you allow a gerbil probably not going to cause a problem um, but someone else it will be a cat 
there's someone else it'll be a dog and then we do get evacuation if they're taking their cages down stairs in the event of a, a fire evacuation then it can be an issue um i've also once come across a a house a, a person who'd, who'd actually without permission um put in a uh, huge uh, almost an aquarium in a, a first floor flat um which took the the load um for the actual um floor uh, above above what it should be um so we had concerns about the sheer weight of the the tank um causing um the whole ceiling to collapse into the the flat below so there are some you know instances where we we do have to think uh, very carefully no that makes that makes a lot of sense thank you i just wanted to yeah clarify that one and then on the point about sort of caravans and motorhomes the land designated to parking that would refer to a I'm assuming that refers to sort of a car park underneath, say, a, related to a, a tower block, as well as sort of general ones. And then next to the house, that would be quite literally next to the house. So there would still be capacity for someone to own one. It's just about sort of making sure it's not parked in somewhere that's taken away someone else's parking or somewhere hazardous. Is that right? Yeah, and certainly for the um, the one being next to the house, we did have a, a very sad case um, about six, seven years ago, where one of our, um, our tenants had a caravan next to the um, next to the house, and uh, the caravan caught fire um, with the, the tenant in it, and obviously with with gas bottles and so on in a caravan uh, that then spread very quickly to the rest of the house. Um, causing significant damage um, and significant injuries to the the person who was in the caravan it's, it's just is simply not safe in terms of other other locations yes we've, we've got pressures in oxford for uh, on parking um and you know we the people if they are lucky enough to enjoy a caravan um we would like them to make their own arrangements for where it should be stored and um, the alternative is we, we do get people with uh, nowhere to park near to the home so we do like to keep those uh, uh, clear and clear from uh, caravans where we can. Um, I'll just go across. Um, Councillor Rule, did you have a follow up or another question? It was on a separate topic. Sorry, but, so I can. Let oh, you, you feel free to feel free to jump in. Fabulous. Thank, thank you. Um, so, yeah, I just had um, one question on the um, as well on the mobility scooters section, mm -hmm. given that was um, some of the feedback and that there's still a line in there, as I understand it, that is to keep mobility. That, uh, people will not be able to keep mobility scooters inside the properties. And I just wondered Correct. what the rationale for that was. Yeah, it's a, a serious uh, fire safety risk. Um, there's been many, many instances up and down the country where the, the batteries have actually caught fire um, and, and literally caused significant damage uh, and even death to um, residents. Um, where we know that there is a demand, where we know that there's someone um, who's doing that, we, we actually... Um, we, we can actually provide them and uh, that's what we have been doing we've been providing fireproof um, scooter stores with power um, so that they can safely store and charge um, slightly different from a, a motorized wheelchair different technology involved um, but certainly in terms of mobility scooters um, it's, it's definitely a, a no-no for us we also have some of the larger schemes are designed with uh, purpose-built scooter store so for example bradlin's cardinal house um they've got purpose-built stores um in their design from the outset because we know people are going to need them thanks you would if it's okay to follow up on that i really appreciate that and that's that sounds very sensible um for, uh, for a sensible reason um i just wonder whether um the for one thing i know that it can be quite uh, like a lot of people who may require mobility scooters um like there are a, a number of reasons and barriers why people don't l seek funding and look for them and one of them may be in fact that they live in a tenant like live in a social house which says in their tenancy agreement that they can't keep this indoors i just wonder if there's anything that we can do to make sure that those people who do require them or may be building up the courage to look into this like that they know that they can have that service provided for them and that and also i kind of would be interested to hear whether um th there are any cases in which actually it's difficult for us to provide those things or is it actually the case that it's actually very easy to build these things in the space but i just know that we've got very different kinds of tenancies so i just and buildings so just yeah we we um we, we've certainly had articles previously in Tents in Touch asking people to come forward to us. Um, so if they do have one or thinking about it, to speak to us first. 
Uh, if the space is there, they're relatively straightforward. The, the modular pods that can be dropped in, um, the, the, the main infrastructure thing is getting electricity in. Um, and we do keep it as a, an asset on our, our, our asset management system. So it, it's as an entity that we we actually have that and, and manage it. Um, but yeah, it's not difficult to do. Um, we, we do find the money to do it because it's, it's the safer thing. Um, I wouldn't go as far as to say we'd want to have a, a call to action for everyone to come forward because obviously it, I, you know it could very quickly become very expensive but certainly we we don't shy away from making people aware if if you know if someone lets us know um, but more often than not it's um it's from when they're doing fire safety fire risk assessments when um or our state officers identify as someone because they don't necessarily store it for um in um in their own flat either they'll, they'll very often have it in the common areas so some will identify as a, as a hazard of some sort in any event so that's where we we do get involved thanks very much did you have any other follow-ups councillor okay, fantastic um i just had a couple more one of them was about one of the issues raised in the consultation about the um elderly people being worried about checking their own fire alarms, that's something you would consider a service issue? Am I correct in thinking? Yeah, there's um, a couple of things we want to do. And a part, part of it is that wider engagement piece, because although we've got some data on people who notified us that they had mobility issues or had disabilities, wheelchair users, um, when they signed up for a tenancy, um, we don't necessarily know everyone whose circumstances might have changed. Um, we do do an annual gas safety check um, and where that happens, the, um, the gas safety, um, the, the check involves checking the both the smoke alarms, uh, any sprinklers, if that was uh, sprinklers, which we've got in towers, and also the carbon monoxide alarms. So we do those as an annual check um, it, where we, we I think we need to do something to assist further is to do the um, those who don't actually have gas. We've got around about a thousand properties um, that that don't have gas. Um, who I, I think it'd be worth us targeting those to just check on the the mobility situation and whether people can actually reach. Um, I mean, the the they're not you know easy to reach. Um, one of the things with carbon monoxide um, alarms because they obviously are a relatively new requirement under law um, is that they are tested on the day of the tenancy sign up. Um, so not all of my housing officers are, are tall enough to reach them. So we've had to issue sticks um, to actually get them to test them themselves. Um, so we, we've, you know, we've, we've actually had to make that adjustment ourselves. Um, but yeah, it's uh, so, certainly something I was, you know, it's, it's something we need to give, put, well, put a focus on to try and get, make sure we've, we've got the right balance. We're taking it to the, because I attend the, the monthly uh, compliance meetings, um, that covers all aspects of health and safety. So I'll take it there and uh, ask the views of those who are experts in, in that side as to frequency and, and what we can do to aid that testing. There's no requirement on us to test, um, but it, it is good practice. Thank you. And um, just finally, I know that this is a lot of the reasons that they have, there are all these um, slightly, I guess, stricter rules are generally to keep um, people safe, either the people living in the tenancy or nearby. Um, but just reading some of them, I think, I don't know, they feel I'm a renter, but obviously not, I, I don't rent through the council. And some of them seem a little, quite a lot more stringent in terms of the tenants' obligations than even mm -hmm. I have, which I can totally understand when they're from a health and safety perspective. But I just worry a little bit from a kind of safeguarding perspective almost with some of the stuff about being responsible for the good behavior of my family, friends and visitors in my home on the estate and local areas, which I completely understand where that's coming from, but it seems like quite in some ways a tall ask. And also I worry about people who are the victim of things like cuckooing, which I know is quite a big safeguarding concern. It's obviously not something they'd be able to do. And I know that's not saying that, you know, you would then sort of, immediately march in and, and evict them because they weren't doing that but it just that sort of fit, felt to me maybe slightly I, I mean I guess I'd like some reassurance that it's not kind of overstepping I guess in that sense if that makes sense no that, that that's certainly a fair point I mean we are um one of the certainly with regard to the last resort 
ultimately eviction um, and getting possession orders before that. Um, a, the judges would have to be satisfied that it's reasonable to make possession orders and reasonable to actually evict someone for the actions or inactions um, that they're responsible for. Um, in, I'll, I'll come on to Joe's question in a second. Um, and in terms of um, in terms of the the actual work we do, if we didn't have something which included friends and family members, um, then we wouldn't be able to intervene. We've got a whole range of interventions available to us. Um, we've got community pre protection warning notices. We've got closure orders. We've got public space protection orders. Um, I don't know if some of you might remember we had one in place in Forrester's Tower for a while to stop a load of youths going in and causing all sorts of vandalism and damage. Um, so having these clauses in there uh, gives us the, the actual tools to, to actually say, for the worst cases, um, in court, it is a breach of contract and uh, we want to take enforcement action. Um, obviously, it's uh, so in terms of cuckooing, um, and that is um, where usually a group of people target a vulnerable person and use their, move in and use their home as a base for drug dealing and other criminal activity. Um, very often um, taking their money, um, having gained the confidence, and uh, it's, it's usually the most vulnerable people. Um, and it is a very sad case. And that's where we get closure orders. Um, and that's where uh, we essentially will get an order with the police to exclude anyone other than the tenant and other named people from actually being in the property. And, and if they someone else does it and they're not supposed to be there, it's a criminal offence. So there's there's lots of activities. We are very we're proportionate in our actions, um, and it's very much um, not just the the victim as well. You might recall from the, anti, the new antisocial behaviour policy and procedures the council brought in uh, at the end of last year. There is also a focus not just on supporting the victim, but also working with the perpetrators to try and find out what the triggers are and trying to get them to improve their behaviours as well. Thank you. That was, yeah, that was really, really helpful and completely understand that makes a lot of sense. Um, are there any other questions from Councillor Sanderson or Councillor Rule? No. Can I just check if Councillor Rule got an answer to when it will be reviewed next? Because I didn't hear that answer, if so. We haven't decided yet. Um, usually it's good practice to review around about five years to see if there's anything material that's changed. Um, so it's almost like a pre-review of whether a, a, an update is needed or not. Um, certainly 2019 was when we were looking at it, five years after 2014. Um, and, and we had started the, the initial consultation, but let's say COVID did come along. Um, so we'd be looking from here uh, around about 2018, unless something significant came in uh, through primary legislation, which does change. There are thousands upon thousands of uh, items of, of statute, regulation and case law precedent that relate to, to housing activities. Um, so things can change quite dramatically. Governments can change um, and have a completely different approach. You might recall that one time it was the um, it was looking at the end of the lifetime tenancies and the introduction of flexible tenancies, fixed term flexible tenancies for everyone, um, which was going down that route um, back in 2016 and 17. Um, but that had that was dropped. So obviously, as a, a council, it was not something we wanted to pursue. I mean, I don't know if it's it would make be make sense to just have a sort of a concrete recommendation from us that it is reviewed with some frequency about five years or did you have a suggestion councillor Rule? well i was going to ask whether it would make sense to review it in even a, a shorter period just given that it's been a long time since there's been a change and it might be that a number of these things do like i think i do share some of your concerns lizzie about the like the extent to which um, the kind of stuff around behaviour issues, for example, are in here. And I just wonder whether actually something within a few years time might be appropriate, given there's been quite a lot of changes and we may find that some of these actually go a bit too, a bit further than is necessary, for example. So I was just going to ask whether something in the next few years, a couple of years might be good as a light review, but a more extensive one, perhaps in five years time. So sort of a light touch review biannually or something as a recommendation from us? If that sounds sensible. 
I mean, they can. We can always have our, our recommendation rejected, but yeah. <laughs> so. I, I would. I would. I would. My preference would be then then to actually have it as every three years um, rather than every other year. Um, yeah. I say, obviously, if something major does happen, then 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 obviously we'll bring something forward, uh, and certainly the. Uh, the, the elements which relate to you know friends family visitors and so on have been in tenancy agreements um for my personal knowledge for the last 33 years so it's not a it's not a new thing great brilliant um, three years makes sense to me others think that's good uh fantastic in which case um thank you all very much for uh, joining us. I think the last item is just something that myself and Councillor Sandals and Councillor all need to uh, put a tick marks next to. So thank you all so much and for taking the time to present and answer our questions. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye. Thanks everyone. Uh, fantastic. In which case, I think all we need to do now is agree the dates of future meetings, which are the meetings for the next municipal year. Um, mm -hmm. So unless anyone's got any concerns, they all look sensible to me. Yep. Um, I've just realised that um, you didn't approve the notes of the previous meeting. So if you could Oops. do that. We approve them? Yep. Yes. Fantastic. We do. Excellent. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's right.